Welcome to Lizzie Borden's You're listening to A Touch of Madness, based on the trial of Lizzie Borden by Kate Lavender. Were you then, when you were eating those three pears in the hot loft, looking out that closed window, feeling better than you were in the morning when you ate no breakfast? I felt better in the morning than I did the night before. That is not what I asked you. You were then, when you were in that hayloft, looking out the window and eating three pears, feeling better, were you not, than you were in the morning when you could not eat any breakfast? I never eat any breakfast. You did not answer my question, and you will if I have to put it all day. Were you then, when you were eating those three three pairs in that hot loft looking out that closed window feeling better than you were in the morning when you ate no breakfast. I was feeling well enough to eat the pears. Were you feeling better than you were in the morning? I don't think I felt very sick in the morning. Only, yes, I I don't know, but I did feel better, as I say. I don't know whether I ate any breakfast or not, or whether I ate a cookie. Were you then feeling better than you did in the morning? I don't know how to answer you, because I told you I felt better in the morning anyway. Do you understand my question? My question is whether, when you were in the loft of that barn, you were feeling better than you were in the morning when you got up. No, I felt about the same. Were you feeling better than you were when you told your mother you did not care for any dinner? No, sir, I felt about the same. You now say, when you were eating the pears, you could see the back door. Were you then feeling better than you did in the morning? I don't know how to answer you because I told you I felt better in the morning anyway. Understand my question. My question is whether, when you were in the loft of that barn, you were feeling better than you were in the morning when you got up. No, I felt about the same. Were you feeling better than you were when you told your mother you did not care for any dinner? No, sir. I felt about the same. Well enough to eat pears, but not well enough to eat anything for dinner. She asked me if I wanted any meat. I asked you why you should select that place, which was the only place which would put you out of sight of the house to eat those three pears in. I cannot tell you any reason. You observe that fact, do you not? You've put yourself in the only place, perhaps, where it would be impossible for you to see a person going into the house. Yes, sir. I should have seen them from the front window. From anywhere in the yard? No, sir. Not unless from the end of the barn. Ordinarily, in the yard, you could see them, and in the kitchen where you had been, you could have seen them. I don't think I understand. When you were in the kitchen, you could see the persons who came in the back door. Yes, sir. When you were in the yard, unless you went around the corner of the house, you could see them come in at the back door. No, sir. Not unless I was at the corner of the barn. The minute I turned, I could not. What was there? A little jog-like. The, the walk turns. I ask you again to explain to me why you took those pears to the pear tree. I did not take them from the pear tree. From the ground, wherever you took them from. I thank you for correcting me. Going into the barn, going upstairs into the hottest place in the barn, in the rear of the barn, the hottest place, and there standing and eating those pears that morning. I beg your pardon. I was not in the rear of the barn. I was on the other end of the barn that faced the street. Where you could see anyone coming into the house. Yes, sir. Did you not tell me you could not? Before I went into the barn, at the jog, on the outside. You now say, when you were eating the pears, you could see the back door. Yes, sir. So nobody could come in at that time without you seeing them. I don't see how they could. After you got done eating your pears, you began your search? Yes, sir. Then you did not see into the house? No, sir, because the bench is at the other end. Now, I have asked you over and over again, and will continue the inquiry, whether anything you did at the bench would occupy more than three minutes. Yes, I think I could. Yes, I think it would, because I pulled over quite a lot of boards and looking. To get at the box? Yes, sir. Taking all of that, what is the amount of time you think you occupied in looking for that piece of lead which you could not find? Well, I should think perhaps I was... 10 minutes. Looking over those old things? Yes, sir, on that bench. Now can you explain why you were 10 minutes doing it? No, only that I can't do anything in a minute. (laughs) 
Came down from the barn. What did you do then? Came into the kitchen. What did you do then? I went into the dining room and laid down my hat. Will you give me the best judgment you can? Can you explain when you came down from the barn? What did you do then? Came into the kitchen. What did you do then? I went into the dining room and laid down my hat. What did you do then? Opened the sitting room door and went into the sitting room. What did you do then? I found my father and rushed to the foot of the stairs. What were you going into the sitting room for? To go up the stairs. What for? To sit down. What had become of the iron? Ironing. The fire had gone out. I thought he went out because the fire was not hot enough to heat the flat. I thought I would wait until dinner and heat the flats again. When you saw your father, where was he? On the sofa. What was his position? Lying down. Describe anything else you noticed. I was so frightened and horrified. I ran to the foot of the stairs and called Maggie. Did you notice he had been cut? Yes, that is what made me afraid. Did you notice that he was dead? I did not know whether he was or not. Did you make any search for your mother? No, sir. Why not? I thought she was out of the house. Did you tell Maggie, you thought your mother had come in? No, sir. That you thought you heard her come in? No, sir. Did you say to anybody that you thought she was killed upstairs? No, sir. To anybody? No, sir. You made no effort to find your mother at all? No, sir. Who did you send Maggie for? Dr. Bowen. She she came back and said Dr. Bowen was not there. What did you tell Maggie? I told her he was hurt. Did you see the blood on the floor? No, sir. You saw his face covered with blood? Yes, sir. Did you see his eyeball hanging out? No, sir. See the gashes where his face laid open? No, no, sir. Nothing of that kind? No, sir. <laughs> Do you know of any employment that would occupy your mother for two hours between 9 and 11 in the spare room? Not unless she was sewing. Did you find anything up there to indicate that she was sewing up there? She had given me a few weeks before some pillowcases to make. My question is not that. Did you see anything that she had some sewing that morning? I was not allowed in that room. I did not see it. Was that the room where she usually sewed? No, sir. Sir. Assuming that the bed was made, did she use it as a sitting room? I don't know anything. I ask you now again, remembering that. I told you that yesterday. Never mind about yesterday. Tell me all the talk you had with your mother when you came down in the morning. I said to her, won't you change your dress before you go out? She had on an old one and said, she said, no, that is all I can remember. In this narrative, you have not again said anything about her having said that she made the bed. I told you that she said she made the bed. In this time saying, you did not put that in. I want that conversation that you had with her that morning. I beg your pardon again. In this time of telling me, you did not say anything about having received a note. I told you that before. Miss Borden, I want you now to tell me all the talk you had with your mother when you came down and all the talk she had with you. Please begin again. She she asked me how I felt. I told her. She asked what I wanted for dinner. I said nothing. She says, I have a note from somebody that is sick and I'm going out and I will get dinner at the same time. I think she said something about the weather. She, she also asked if I would direct some paper wrappers for her, which I did. She said she had a note. Yes, sir. You told me yesterday you never saw the note. No, sir. I never did. You looked for it. No, sir. But others have. She did not say where she was going. No, sir. Does she usually tell you where she's going. She does not generally tell me. Did she say when she is coming back? No, sir. Did you know that Mr. Morse was coming to dinner? No, sir. I knew nothing about him. Were you at dinner? I was in the house. I, I don't know whether I went down to dinner or not. I was not feeling well. Whether you ate dinner or not? I don't remember. Were you at tea Wednesday night? I went down, but I don't know whether I had any tea or not. Did you sit down with the family? I think I did, but I'm not sure. Was Mr. Morse there? I did not see him. Did you have an apron on Thursday? Thursday. Did I what? Have an apron on Thursday. I don't think I did. Do you remember whether you did or not? I don't remember, sure, but I don't think I did. You had aprons, of course. I had aprons, yes, sir. Will you not try to think whether you did or not? I don't think I did. Will you try and remember? I had no occasion for an apron that morning. If you can remember, I wish you would. I don't remember. That is all the answer you can give me about that. Yes, sir. Did you have any occasion to use the axe or a hatchet? No, sir. Did you know where they were? I know there was an old axe down cellar. That is all I knew. Did you know anything about an old hatchet down cellar? The last time I saw it, it was stuck in an old chopping block. Was that the only axe or hatchet down cellar? That's all I knew about. When was the last time you knew of it? When our farmer came to chop wood. When was that? I think a year ago 
go last winter. There was so much wood on hand, he did not come last winter. Do you know anything that would occasion the getting of blood on an axe or hatchet? No, sir. Do you know anything that would occasion the getting of blood on an axe or hatchet down cellar? No, sir. I do not say there was, but assuming an axe or hatchet was found down cellar with blood on it... No, sir. Do you know there was found at the foot of the stairs a hatchet and axe? No, sir, I did not. Can you tell of any killing of an animal or any operation that would lead to there being blood on them? No, sir. He killed some pigeons in the barn last May or June. With what? I don't know, but I thought he wrung their necks. What made you think so? I think he said so. Did anything else make you think so? All but three or four had their heads on. Cut off or twisted off? I don't know which. How did they look? Their heads were gone. That is all. Did it look as if they were cut off? I did not look at that particularly. Is there anything else besides that that would lead, in your opinion, so far as you can remember, to the finding of instruments in the cellar with blood on them? I know of nothing else. Was there any effort made by the witness to notify Mrs. Borden that Mr. Borden was dead? No, sir. When I found him, I rushed right to the foot of the stairs for Maggie. I suppose Mrs. Borden was out. At the time, did you say anything about her to anybody? No, sir. After your father was killed? No, sir. Did you say you thought she was upstairs? No, sir. Did you ask them to look upstairs? No, sir. Did you suggest to anybody to search upstairs? I said, I don't know where Mrs. Borden is. That is all. You did not suggest that any search be made for her? No, sir. I want you to give me all that you did by way of word or deed to see whether your mother was dead or not when you found your father dead. I did not do anything except I said to Mrs. Churchill, I don't know where Mrs. Borden is. I think she is out, but I wish you would look. You did ask her to look. I said that to Mrs. Churchill. Where did you intend for her to look? In Mrs. Borden's room. When you went out to the barn, did you leave the door shut, the screen door? I left it shut. When you came back, did you find it shut or open? I found it open. What time was it that you came back from the barn? I don't know what time it was. Have you any idea when it was your father came back. I think it was after 10. He was not gone very long. How long was it before he got back and you went out to the barn? I went right out to the barn. How soon? I should think not less than five minutes. When he got back to the house, did he not go into the dining room? I don't know. And there sit down? I don't know. Why don't you know? Because I was in the kitchen. You heard the bell ring? Yes, sir. And you knew he came in? Yes, sir. But you did not see him? No, sir. What made you go into the sitting room? Because I wanted to ask him a question. What question? Whether there was any mail for me. At that time, wasn't Maggie washing the windows in the sitting room? I don't know. Did you help him to lie down? No, sir. Fix his pillow or head? No, sir. I did not touch the sofa. The doctors had not given him any medicine that you know of? We gave him castor oil and then Garfield tea. When did you first consult Mr. Jennings? I think my sister sent for him. I can't tell you. Tell me once more the particulars of the trouble with your mother four or five years ago. She had a stepmother and a half-sister, Mrs. Borden did, and their father's house was for sale. She wanted them to have a home and she persuaded father to buy it and put it in their name. I said he ought to do for us, his own children, what he did for them. So he gave us grandfather's house. That was all the trouble we ever had. You have not stated any trouble between you and her. I said I stopped calling her mother four or five years ago. I told you that yesterday. You had no words with your stepmother then. I talked with her and told her he ought to do for us what he did for her. Did your mother leave any property? I don't know. Did you give the officer the same skirt you had on the day of the tragedy? Yes, sir. Do you know whether there was any blood on the skirt? No, sir. Assuming there was, do you know how it got there? No, sir. Assuming there was, can you give an explanation how it got on the dress skirt? No, sir. Have you offered any? No, sir. Have you ever offered any? No, sir. Have you said it came from flea bites? I said it might have been on the petticoats. You said the dress skirt. I did. Did you offer that as an explanation? I told the men at the house that I had fleas. Assuming that the blood came from the outside, can you give an explanation of how it came there? No, sir. You cannot now? No, sir. What shoes did you have on that day? A pair of ties. What color? Black. Will you give them to the officer? Yes. Is there anything else you would like to correct in your previous ter- testimony? No, sir. Did you buy a dress pattern in New Bedford? A dress pattern? Yes, a pattern. I, I think I did. Where is it? Home. Where at home? In a trunk. Not made up? No, sir. Where did you buy it? I don't know the name of the store. What kind was it? It was a blue stripe corded gingham. <laughs> 
Did you go into any drugstore and inquire for prussic acid? I did not. Where were you on Wednesday morning? At home. All day? All day until Wednesday night. Nobody there except you, your parents, and the servant. Why, Mr. Morse came sometime in the afternoon, but I did not see him. He did not come so to see you? No, sir. Did you go into the drugstore for any purpose whatsoever? I did not. You said yesterday that you did not go into the room where your father lay after he was killed on the sofa, but only lo looked in at the door. I only looked in. Did you ever, after your mother was found killed, go into that room? No, sir. You came down in the night with Miss Russell to get some water. Thursday night? I, I don't remember it. Don't you remember coming down some time to get some toilet water? No, sir. There was no toilet water downstairs. Or to empty the slops? I'm not sure. Was the dress that was given to the officers the same dress that you wore that morning? Yes, sir. The India silk? No, it was not India silk. It is silk and linen. Some call it Bengaline silk. Did you give the officer the same shoes and stockings that you wore? I did, sir. Did you tell us yesterday all the errand that you had at the barn? Yes, sir. You have nothing to add to what you said? No, sir. Miss Borden, of course you appreciate the anxiety that everybody has to find the author of this tragedy. And the questions that I put to you are in that direction. I now ask you if you can furnish any other fact or give any other even suspicion that will assist the officers in any way in this matter. It was after my sister went away. I came home from Miss Russell's one night, and as I came up towards the side door, I saw a shadow on the side steps. Somebody ran down the steps around the east end of the house. I thought it was a man, and I was frightened. I hurried to the front door and locked it. What time of the night was that? Around a quarter to nine. Do you remember what night that was? She had been away two weeks today, so it must have been within two weeks. You mean two weeks to the time of the murder? It's today, not Thursday? Yes, but that would be three weeks. I thought you said the day your father was murdered was just two, just two weeks. Yes, she had. Have you any sealskin sacks? Yes, sir. Where are they? Hanging in a large white bag in the attic, each one separate. Do you ever use prussic acid on your sacks? Acid? No, sir, I don't use anything on them. Do you know of anything else that you can suggest that amounts to anything whatsoever? I know of nothing else. That is all I know. Baby girl dressed in blue Mama died when she was two I'm Martin Dodge, and this was recorded at KBU Radio in Portland, Oregon. If you would like more information, visit the website of Lizzie Borden, audio.com. Transcriptions of Lizzie Borden's Inquest, provided with permission by Stephanie, Corey, and Lizzie Andrew Borden.com.